Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for another update of uh, Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2. So as is traditional we're going to start off with uh, what's been going on up in Norvis orbit because that's where all the really exciting stuff is happening at the moment. But just to break tradition a little bit we're going to start off by talking about what Tristan's been up to because this, le this leads quite nicely into all of the other things that are going on. So he's been uh, putting, he's been finishing off the uh, the energy science over here. So we now have four ranks of machines along here that are producing all of the different memory cards. We've got the nuclear one up here, uh, radiation data, I think it's called, which brings in some uranium two three five and some uh, memory cards. And then out here, there's a reasonable chance it'll pass out the uranium two three five, so that just gets passed around. It's the standard loop thing. You've seen this before. That's that's nice and easy for us to deal with now. We 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 we're used to this and much much harder versions. And as you can see, we've made loads of this. That's going great. Then next up is the, um, what's this, polarization data, I think. Yes, polarization data. And that, that's where you take a, a, you bring in a mirror, you fire a laser at it, and you get some data out as well, and some scrap, because apparently it destroys the mirrors as well, which is very untidy. And some junk data cards as well. But fortunately for Tristan, this is nice and easy to deal with, because he can just throw it all on the disposal belt that goes over here, and disappears off to parts unknown, uh, that he doesn't really need to care about, and all of the scrap and, and junk data cards will be dealt with downstream. So that's nice and easy. Then he's got the computers in the middle that are making the actual um, the actual science packs or the catalogs, sorry. Then down here we're doing we're doing this this is some sort of energy data, but conductivity data. But we've run out of copper, so that's running that's having some issues. Uh, we'll have to investigate why that is running out of copper. Perhaps in the next stream, or maybe we'll have a bit of a look at it sooner than that. We, we shall see. And then down here we've got another another data, the electromagnetic field data. And again, this is a similar sort of thing. You take in. Um, uh, this one, oh, this one requires blue clouds as well. But basically, you take in raw, uh, you take in rare metals and memory cards, and you and you produce the data. Now, as you can see here, the rare metals aren't quite as the, he the supply isn't quite as healthy as we would like over here. And, and this is because at the moment, this is set up just being fed from one of the remote planets. So it might be Agnea, it might be. Uh, it might be Njord, I can't remember, but one of them has a uh, is turning all of the remote, all of the rare metals that are made by um, pulverizing the core fragments instead of shipping them to Norvis as we've done in the past. It's shipping them directly to here, and this means this is great because it reduces the amount of shipping around that we have to do. Where is it? There it is. There's the delivery cannon chest. It reduces the amount of shipping around that has to be done by the system in general. So that's saving on delivery cannon capsules or rockets or however we get the stuff up here. But on the flip side, on the downside. It means that if there isn't enough, quite enough being produced on that outpost, it doesn't get topped up by anything. So there is, there are two, there are two answers to this. One is to ship everything back to Norvis first, and then ship it back out from there, which leads to a lot of double handling, and is, that's, so it's not ideal because of that. The other way is to have a prioritization system, and so you get, you come in here, and where you have your um, your shopping list here, it's a much larger negative number, like minus minus a thousand, for example, and you tell your high priority end to ship if there's less than zero um, showing up on the network, which means it'll ship if there's less than a thousand in the chest or in the whole storage system, um, and you tell the low priority one to ship if there's less than my, less than minus a thousand there or maybe less than minus 900 or something like that in which case it'll start shipping when there's less than a hundred in, in here so in theory you'll always use the um, the rare metals coming from the high priority supply first the ones that don't require the double handling um, and then you take the ones from the lower priority system which is just the, the, the stockpile on Norvis of which we have crazy amounts because it comes out of all the core mining and we don't really use it very much and you use and you ship that out as, as the lower priority so top it up when you're a bit low like we are at the moment so that is easy enough to do. It's a solved problem. We've done that before with um, with various other things. So it won't be difficult for Tristan to implement that, but it is causing us to grind to a halt at the moment, so he will need to add it in at some point. So this means that in theory, at least, we are now producing the Energy Science Catalog 1s here. These are then fed down the belt into the, tra into the uh, station over here and dumped straight into the train. And now we've started setting up all of our trains like this. So we've got a row here for energy catalog ones, and then uh, a row for, and then the rest of it is just sort of blocked off. At the moment, and Tristan uses damaged spaceship consoles as his miscellaneous here as a placeholder uh, thing, which is fine. It works as well as as well as um, anything else. Although you do need to pick, make sure you pick something that you won't actually have any of. So this this is fine for that. And though, and so the reason we've got both the blocks off like this and with this limitation set as well is because we want to we, we need we need to have the filters in here to make sure the trains fill up with fill up with anything it shouldn't but then we also need to put this limit across here to make sure the train knows when it's full because if we do if we just do that then the train will fill up to here with them um, energy set catalogs but it then won't leave because it's going to expect another 40 slots worth of damaged spaceship consoles as well, which it obviously isn't going to get because we don't have any of those. So this means the train will then just sit there forever. But if you do that as well, then the train knows that it's ready, that, it, that it's to count 
filling up with energy catalogs as being full and therefore it will leave. So when he develops energy catalog 2 we'll do that and then go through and change all of these filters to be energy catalog 2s and we need to be careful about doing this because um, if I'm not if, if we're not then it'll um, then we'll accidentally end up with, uh, with with the wrong sort of catalogs being put in here. It's not the end of the world, but it will make it a bit of a pain to, to reprogram. So actually, what we've we've learned you can do is you can actually reprogram these things even when they're set, even when they're covered by red like this. So that's going to be a nice, safe way of swapping them over as long as we remember to do it at the right time. So eventually, we will make a train's worth, and, and by a train's worth, I mean 20% of a train's worth, of the energy catalogs over here. They'll get passed over, they'll get put into the train. The train will depart, and then the train will depart automatically because it's, because it's told to over here. And it will go over to energy catalog 1 drop, where it will dump them all. Now this train hasn't been programmed properly yet, so I'll, uh, but I'll talk about that a bit more when it's, uh, when it's my turn in the, uh, to, go, to go through the things that I've been doing. So as I said earlier when I was talking about the, um, the, the catalogue production over here, I mentioned that this area requires lots and lots of mirrors. And so mirrors, well, previously, when, when, I, when I did my sort of, here's my quick um, quick and dirty proof of concept, just, just get me some energy catalogues, I don't care how you do it, over here. Um, I was building the mirrors on site because, well, they, they require a certain amount of stuff, but they're not too difficult to make. And as you can see, they're being churned out here. Most of them are going into um, solar panel production over here, but, in, but they can also be passed out down here in theory. I mean, they're not at the moment, um, because Mark is hogging them all. But in theory, they could be passed along here, and this is actually presumably is why this system isn't working, because there aren't any mirrors for it. But anyway, yes, we, we, we can produce them there, but that's not going to be enough for a full so full on science setup, and we're going to need them in other places as well. So Tristan has built an area over here that is bringing in the low density structures and the iridium and the glass, presumably all by delivery cannon at the moment. Yes, here it is. He's all dropping, all dropping in here, and for some reason he's run out of glass. Maybe he's importing that from Magnair as well. I, I'm not quite sure exactly. This is something I'm not worrying too much about, we'll, we'll, but um, I think I might be looking at it. I might be looking at this tomorrow to give you a bit more information about it. But yeah, we've got the, imis, the um, iridium coming in here. We've got the uh, we've got lube coming in here as well because apparently that's needed. And it's just being dumped into a into a train here, or into a station here rather. So there is a. Um, this strikes me as horribly inefficient, but we are actually filling up a train full of lube here, um, or a, a station full of lube from barrels that are being shipped up. That is genuinely horrible. But at this stage, at this stage of the game, I mean. We don't have a huge amount of choice about that. We need we need we, lube is needed up here for um, specifically for making the the mirrors, and I think there is somewhere else on the system that needs it as well. So it makes a sort of sense to bring it all up to here. I suppose it's one central point, and then in the future we can make this make a bit more sense. I guess. Um, yes. So yeah. Anyway, we're here. We are making the mirrors in in. I would say would say in large quantities, except we've now run out of glass, so we've stopped making them. Uh, they're being passed down into the station down here, where a train will come in, pick them all up, and can then be and they can then be taken off to be turned into science over there. There might have been some expansion of the various cloud production over here, although actually no, I, th I think that looks about the same. Again, you will probably note that we are running low on we possibly running low on yes, we are running low on rare metals here as well. So we haven't run out yet, but you'll see there is actually a, a gap there. So we have the the, uh, the chest, the warehouse here is empty. So that's going to be having the same problems as the other one. But then the fix is exactly the same. While I'm over here, I shall observe that Mike has now returned to um, has returned to join us in Norbit orbit. So he's uh, he's flown a spaceship over here, and someone's put an outline around it in in scaffolding, so we can tell where it traditionally parks and uh, and land it there again. And so the reason we've put it here is because we're making the ion stream here, and that means we can pass this across here. We can pump it out and refill all of these tanks in the in the spaceship over here. So these are all. They're, they're, they're nearly full. Uh, we're having slight production problems apparently due to insufficiencies of orange clouds, which are insufficient due to just the fact that we're getting through a lot of them, as far as I can tell. Okay, so we've got, yeah, we, we seem to have a little bit of a shortage of it. It's being pulled out at both ends. It'll probably catch up. I don't think we're using enormous amounts of blue clouds because there is a train here that's completely full and isn't going anywhere. So it's probably fine. But yes, we are we are now using those um, to refill the refill the fuel tanks on the spaceship, which means we'll be able to start flitting around in it a bit more without worrying about it running out. I don't know how much he got through in, in the in the time. Well, I say he got through. Uh, I've been using it mostly, and then he used it to come back from Kothar. But I don't know how much we managed to get through in the time we're using it. But I but it's nice to have it refueled again. So getting back over to Tristan again for a moment, I did mention that he was uh, dumping lots and lots of scrap onto the disposal system over here and saying that that means that, well, he's just getting rid of it. He doesn't have to worry about it anymore. And that's true to an extent. It does get passed out onto the, onto the belt, which goes up here, round here, and then feeds down in here. But Tristan has been doing a bit of work on the on the systems over here. So actually, whilst I say he doesn't have to worry about it, maybe he doesn't have to, but he has been anyway, because there were some... We did have a few, few issues in here. 
So he's put in some of these buffer systems like this one, where now when the uh, when the junk data cards come in, there's there's a storage space here. So if we have a little bit of a surge of them coming through, and it's more than the uh, these machines can deal with, we can then collect them in here, and an alarm will go off to warn us about it because if there's more than ten of anything in there, which is great, it'll, t it'll warn us to come over and, and sort it out. Um, but then if it's a system, if the system over here can keep up in general, it's just been there's a, it's just been there's a massive surge come through because maybe I don't know we've unblocked something and with with the old plunger. And and now it's start, stuff is starting to flow again, but the system is generally capable of keeping up with the rate we're producing them at. Then we can just let them buffer in here briefly, and then and then return, return it'll return to normal without it blocking the the the, uh, the line all the way up here. Got the same thing here for broken memory cards, and down here for scrap as well. So as you can see, he's put them in for all of the all of the things we're dealing with. Um, one of uh, except oh no no we've got it in here for contaminated scrap as well. He's had to struggle a little bit more to feed that fit that one in by the looks of it, um, because I didn't leave a huge amount of space there. But um, oops, but never mind. <laughs> um, and more, most notably is the the one down here for barrels, where he's actually put in four different machine, uh, four different uh, four separate chests here to pass them around between, because we had such a massive influx of barrels. And they only stack up to ten. So we had, uh, so not only did we have loads and loads and loads of barrels that we didn't that weren't dealing with, we also weren't dealing with them quickly enough. And they only stack up to trap ten. So it was a sort of a triple threat. And we had a massive problem here. The chest filled up, and it was still backing up. So that's why there's a set of four of them in here to deal with all of the barrels. Um, I also then came. I this this was a bit this bit was me. I came along and put in extra two recycling machines here because the four we had weren't capable of keeping up with it. And and having looked around a little bit now, I said I, I was one. I was thinking it was just as desperately trying to fill up all of these uh, pipes over here because you can see there's quite a lot being pumped out from the um, from the petroleum gas here. But no, having looked around a little bit more. I now blame uh, filling up these tanks over here because we've been bringing up huge numbers of barrels of uh, of lube, emptying the barrels and then in, into these tanks because we've got now we've had a hundred thousand lube plus whatever's been used up by making all of these mirrors brought up in a relatively short time, and then all of those barrels just dumped straight out onto the disposal belt. So I think that's probably where they all came from. Um, I mean. It's, it's, it's we, we sometimes you need to deal do that sort of thing. So it's good that we've we found the problem. We've been able to expand the, the uh, system over here to deal with it. Um, it did occur to me that if we do if we ever need even more, there is a bit of space over here which we could expand out into. So it's not quite as crammed in as I thought it was originally. But putting in these extra two down here, especially with the uh, speed modules in them, has got us to the point where we are just churning through and turning all of this um, all the barrels into steel. The steel, of course, flows into these warehouses, and that brings me on to another potential problem for the future that I noticed during the last stream, and that's that these warehouses are actually starting to fill up. Um, this is this isn't more like more than eight. This is like 85% full now, um, and that's that's a potential problem because if this foot fills up completely, then obviously we're not going to be able to crush the barrels with, and then this is going to fill up, and then we're going to have all kinds of issues. So we need a, a, a steel sink somewhere in the system. So fortunately, Mike has come up here and he's now going to start working on the um, material science. And I believe that making the material testing packs is going to put quite a. Um, oh no, it's not. That's not going to. That's not going to put a drain on the uh, on the steel production. But there's something that goes into the uh, material science that is going to put a big drain on it. Um, Okay, here we go. So the tensile strength data is actually not as much of a drain as I thought. So it's going, that's going to be producing one steel plate for every tensile strength data. Uh, but it's also going to be using five lubricant, and that means a, a significant fraction of a barrel uh, is going to be required in order to get bring the lubricant up. So I think whilst I was thinking, yeah, this will be fine, this will get through a load, of the, a load of the steel, it's actually not going to. It does mean we can get rid of at least one train load worth of it to put, to put over into his, into, his, into his part of the factory and start getting rid of some of it there. But actually, that's not going to be quite as much of a fix as I thought it was. So um, yeah, we're going to need to we're going to need to find somewhere else to get rid of all of this spare steel. Um, potentially, we could bring it up to here and put it on onto into the bus system. That might be worth doing, uh, just because it's a way of getting rid of uh, some spare. Um, but the iron and the copper that are gradually building up up here, these ones we can get rid of into the um, into the into the making the material testing pack. So again, I'm going to ask Mike. In fact, I already have asked Mike to uh, to try and summon those in first. And I think maybe the stone as well. Oh, and there's rare metals here. That, that, there we go. That'll that'll not solve Tristan's problem because we've only made like 160 of them. All right, forget that. But we do have we do have 14,000 stone though, so that could potentially be used. I think one of these. Okay, no. Okay, the rest are ah, the recipe has changed. I was thinking of the vanilla recipe where you use stone in order to make plasma stream. Um, in K2SE it, or K2, it turns out you actually now start using lithium to make the plasma stream. So that's different. We don't need to, we don't need stone over here. I don't know. We're going to have to find something to do with that stone. Maybe will that go into the material testing packs? No. 
Okay, so we're, we're going to have to find a sink for all of this stone we're producing over here, um, eventually. And at the moment, this one is much less of a problem. We've only got, um, it's only 30% full so far, um, because this is only coming out from the scrap recycling. And it's not coming, we're not pumping it through in quite the same way that we are with the barrels. So it's going to be a problem eventually, but not for quite a long time. Speaking of Mike, um, he has also claimed himself an area uh, up up here where he's going to start putting where he's going to be putting in the, um, the the material science. So we have finally managed to talk him into um, into doing material science. I think he was a little bit nervous about it because um, after after the uh, the bit of a the the shock that he had when he tried to produce iridium, which you can see here by this diagram, that is kind of horrific. Uh, you can see why he was a little bit nervous about uh, about moving on to the next step of that. However, having that now had a bit of a bit more of a look at the recipes, I think he reckons that it's not going to be too difficult. And I think he's right. The um, the material science is not one of the hardest sciences. However, so far he's got well he's he's built a station here that is he's going to be for picking up the uh, catalogs <laughs> beyond that he hasn't done anything uh, uh, put down a little bit okay put down a little bit of, um, of scaffolding but basically he's not done anything yet that's fair enough he's been doing all of the design work in a um, in, 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 in the um, what's it called uh, this this area the the um, the blueprint sandbox which I, I personally have not really used significantly uh, so here we see now here we see one of um, Mark's designs Mike has been using his personal sandbox rather than the force one so we don't get to see what he's been up to but he's been designing it carefully or in in the sandbox and we'll presumably then put down all the blueprints in the next episode and we'll see it all get come up and get run, and running if, if he's got that far I'm not I'm not quite sure I don't want to I don't want to oversell it <laughs> As part of that, though, he did extend the rail network. So previously, we had from this roundabout to this roundabout. So we had the spurs coming off either side here, which was getting us the astro science, the science park, um, bioscience, miscellaneous, something a bit fishy there, energy science, and the mall. Um, and then Tristan put in the cloud production over here, which hopefully is going to be all right. I'm I'm still a little bit concerned that we might have a, a clash between cloud production and um, and energy science production because if, if, especially if we need to extend this plasma production a long long way although that probably could loop back around again so well it, maybe it'll be all right we shall have to see how that goes in the future um so now mike has put in an extra extension to come over here giving him an extra space over here to put in the put in the uh, material science and there's an extra space down here as well available now for something in the future at the moment we don't have any specific plans for that but i'm sure we'll find something eventually uh who knows we shall see and yes, yeah, speaking of the uh, of the sciences, I've been expanding out the uh, the astro science over here. So I've essentially tried to roughly triple the production of what we of everything over here. So I mean, I started off by putting it by going from three to nine machines down here. Nine is an odd number. I don't know why it's not ten. Um, but I've gone up to having uh, having nine of these machines in down here, which meant I had to expand the uh, the coolant systems down here a little bit because we weren't getting the the uh, the chilled uh, the cold thermal fluid through as quickly as we needed. It also meant I needed to expand the orreries up here in order to get more of the memory cards through. That's fine. These are the sort of things you expect to need to do when you expand. And then, of course, the um, of course the the telescopes up here. So we've got a massive number of them now. And up top, we've got and, and then up top, we've got a few more of the machines making the frames. So this is all working pretty well. But for some reason, we, notably, we've uh, switched over what we're short of. So when I was looking at this during the stream, we were short of the uh, of the blue data cards. The, um, I mean, if I look really really closely at them, you can see we've got yellow, blue, and green. Um, green is visible, blue is ultraviolet, and yellow is infrared, I believe. Um, so we were short of the blue one, so I put in some extra machines here to make those because we weren't short of the uh, of the frames. So that has now easily caught up. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four machines working there. We've got one, two, three, four machines working here. Fine, uh, but we've caught. But we're now running. We're running short of the green ones, the visible light, and that makes a certain amount of sense because if we come up here and look at the recipes, we'll see that this one takes in uh, twelve every time it tries to run. These two only take in ten. So as I showed you last week, it takes significantly more. Um, of the uh, significantly more frames per data card produced with the uh, with the visible, and so those are all being churned out here. The input of frames does appear to be fast enough at the moment, so it looks like it looks like we just need some more um, visible telescopes on the end over here, just to get that sped up a little bit and to, keep, to allow this to catch up, and then to allow this to catch up. We, how far behind are we? So it looks like yeah, we're not doing particularly well. We've got about half the machines running down here, so geez, really only half. Okay, so that means I'm going to need to roughly double the number of the uh, visible light scopes and then almost double all of the rest of them. That's an incredible quantity. Um, I don't really have the infrastructure set up to build all of that. I might have to um, extend these belts along further. Actually, this, this belt running almost flat out. So what's, what's the recipe look like? You take in... Um, 
And you're only taking one of each to produce 10 frames. So that, yeah, that should be fine. I should be able to extend this quite a lot further and then feed, feed the, uh, the frames in directly along here. Um, because at the moment, this belt is going almost flat out at the rate we're going at the moment. So if I double it, I'm going to need another belt's worth. Uh, so that's gonna, yeah, that's going to take some expansion, and that's going to be that's going to be blooming huge. Um, I mean, it's going to take me well from here to to about here. Uh, that's going to take up a good two thirds of the allotted space for astro science stuff. That's that that, that that's big. Um, but we do want to be producing these catalogs a bit faster, but because we we are still over here, we are still trying to fill up a train. Um, like this, fill up a train, and okay, it's nearly full, but we'd like to have a bit of buffer available. So yeah, this is going to need a lot of expansion of the telescopes. That's going to be a big project for next time, but that's that's kind of okay. We we can we can do that. So yes, that required me to expand all of these out, including tripling the number of machines along here, which means we now have, well, the machines are running not running flat out. In fact, it looks like... It's kind of hard to judge exactly how much of the how, how much the machines are... How, how, how hard the machines are working, because we've got... Both belts are basically full from the two machines. Uh, this one is... This machine is running basically constantly in order to keep that belt full. Okay. So I think in order to keep it into a single belt full, you do need... Probably, probably three machines. I would, I would estimate. Um, but then it's, it's being the numbers are being thrown off ever so slightly by the, uh, by, by this splitter down here. Anyway, I shall worry about that in the next episode. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to talk about is the, is, is the train system here carrying these up. So at the moment, this, this, this one is programmed properly, and this is working in the same way I was using with the, uh, with the, the main space science ones that I showed you in the last video. So at the moment it's going to sit here until it's full, and full at the moment means full until it's not got it, until it, uh, ignoring the uh, the red red redded out area. So that's fine. We're going to fill up until we've got full cargo inventory of Astro ones. Uh, then it'll go over to Astro catalog drop. It will then unload until it's until all three of these are satisfied. So if we go up and have a look at the station here. We are reading, with this station, we are reading the contents of the train with this station. So it's, pulling, it's, it's reading the train contents, putting it onto the circuit network around here. We are then subtracting one Astro 1 catalogue from the, from the train. So when the so when the train turns up and is full, it'll be carrying about 2,000, four, no, about 4,000 Astro 1 catalogues, I think. So we'll get a 3,999 out of it. So that will be, so that'll be still be a positive number. Eventually, when it empties, and there's none in it, then we'll get a minus one Astro catalog coming out of there. That'll go into here, and this is saying if anything is less than zero, then output a, a T signal, passes it into here, into the here, which where we send it to the train, and then the train will, will monitor for that. So if there's if the uh, if, if T is if, if it gets a T, it will leave as long as the other two conditions are satisfied. So the other one of the other conditions <clears throat> is as long as you've been in the station for at least 10 seconds, and that's important because when the train first arrives. There will be nothing coming out of the train until it has arrived and started sending its signal. So there will be one tick where we are getting, still getting a zero coming out of the train. So this would be set to minus one. So this will also be set to a T. So there will be a T going into the train. So that will happen for one tick while it gets, while the signal gets. There'll be that tick will be there when the train arrives. Then it will propagate. And then there'll be a second tick while the signal propagates to here, and then a third tick while it propagates back into the train. I imagine. So it's going to. So you need to have the train wait for at least three ticks, which is a twentieth of a second before it leaves. So I've set it to be idle for as long as it's. It's not allowed to leave for ten seconds essentially, which is guaranteed. Which is bound to be enough. Then the third part of that is it has to have been idle for at least one second. Because there is a risk that a train might turn up here with eventually with all four types of memory cards, in, or all types of science catalogs in, and it will start unloading them all. And then, due to whatever reason, it might it might get to the point where it's unloaded one of them, but it's still unloading another one because it's trying to get rid of more of that, or it, there's been a bit of a delay in there, or something like that. So we don't want it, the train to leave while it's actively unloading because there's no point in it shuffling off when it's still got some, when it's still just unloaded some. So in that case, it will wait until there's been at least one second of inactivity, so one second of not unloading, to put for things to balance out a little bit, and then the train can leave. So with that, with those three commands, we can make sure the train behaves itself reasonably sensibly, and won't, won't shuttle, back more, shuttle back and forth more than it has to, and will stop and unload, but when it runs out of any of the uh, any of the catalogues, it will leave to go and get some more. And as I say, that is exactly what's how, how it's running up here. So here we've got minus one of each of them. We've got the same sort of thing programmed in here. So when the train empties, it will leave. 
previously I had this hooked up to these stations as well and in hindsight I decided that was a mistake because that means that the train would turn up here and it would unload and unload and unload until until um, and then it would sit there until the station ran out of one of those types of, um, of card as well as as well as the train and there's no point in it just sitting there like that it might as well go head back over get some more of the met the uh, science packs the data cards and bring them back over here so it is ready so if there's if there's any sort of delay or we're doing science particularly quickly we don't end up dragging the all of the uh, science packs out of here into the into the machine and then have it run out and stop because that's not not ideal that said if you look at the uh, the number of um, the data cards in, in here because we're using loaders to fill these up rather than inserters you get absolutely crazy numbers held inside the um, inside the science lab so it, there's a there's a big buffer held there. It doesn't matter quite so much, but you know it. it I like to th keep things sort of running running smoothly. So this brings me over to the um, the astro the, to the science park, and, and there's quite quite a lot of stuff has been happening. Oh, the trains the uh, astro train has arrived, as you can see. So it's now uh, turn that back on. There we go. It's now unloading as much as it can, but these are set to limit the amount in the uh, in in the station to two thousand. So it, it's loaded up to two thousand, and then a tiny bit of overflow. We don't care about that. And the point of this is to make sure that these warehouses don't completely fill up with Astro Catalog 1. So we're just, we're just limiting the amount of each one that can go in there. And, and 2,000 seems like a good number to give us a buffer. So yeah, that train can now sit there happily, un gradually unloading as they get used up down here. And eventually it can then beetle off and go and get some more wanted empties. Great. So yes, science over here. Well, I've made uh, some minor changes. So, as you may or may not remember, up here we had these these computers here. These are producing the um, astro. Sorry, these are producing the significant data. So that's done by turn, taking in the insights, which are done by from processing the, uh, the catalogs, process them into insights, bring them up here, process them into significant data. Now that has stopped because we've upgraded to the second tier recipe now that brings in both astro astro insights and energy insights. And the reason we're doing that is because. This recipe pulls in the same number of insights in total as the other recipe, as the original recipe, but it produces 50% more significant data. So instead of taking in 36 astro and producing four, it takes in 18 of each, so 36 in total, same number, and produces six significant data. And so since significant data is so expensive, getting an extra 50% out of it, it seems like a really good idea. The only problem is that because of the aforementioned lack of, was it rare metals, I think, uh, Tristan is not currently producing energy science, or energy science catalogs and so they're not being brought over here in order to be turned into the into the insights in order to be shipped down here in order to be made into the significant data in order to be shipped down here to be made into the um, to be made into the astro science packs in order to be shipped back up here so <laughs> everything is ground to a halt <clears throat> So the, yeah, the down the upside of this is that you get you get the much more um, efficient recipe. You produce 50% more um, of your significant data for your for your inputs. The downside is that because the because it requires both of them, if you run out of one of them, then the other system is going to grind to a halt as well. So this is a little a little bit problematic. Now there I. I the, uh, the obvious answer to this would be to switch one of these computers back to doing the um, the, the, the uh, basic recipe. So yes, it's less efficient, but at least it would be happening at the moment. The problem is that the basic recipe requires cold thermofluid, whereas the, this, this tier 2 recipe requires super chilled thermofluid, super cooled thermofluid. Um, so I can't do that in here without running another pipe over from here, which I mean, I. I, I could do. I could run an additional pipe from here across to here and have it pipe up into some separate computers, but that seems like a lot of faff for something that should be fixed relatively soon once Tristan gets his um, his rare metals in, in a row. And so I think I'm just going to deal with us not doing any science for a, for a little while. It's it's not ideal, but I think I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. We'll just we'll just we'll just wait and see if we can find any other sciences that don't require any of the any of the proper um, space t the tier space tier science packs to do. So yes, as I as you saw, as I scroll, scrolled up and down briefly, what the big thing I did in the last in the last stream was put in a system up here for processing the uh, the energy science catalogs. So in much the same way that down here we're bringing in energy catalog one, processing them into insights and science packs, and bringing in the beryllium in order to do so. Up here, we are bringing in the energy catalogs, passing them across here, turning them into insights, passing them up to, and then passing those up to be made into science packs, uh, well, along with the holmium. To do so, and so I put in a delivery cannon on um, Nord to ship the Holmium ingots over here. They are then chopped up by well, just one machine at the moment. But there's a second one that we may or may not use in the future. More likely, we'll use this to make Holmium cables, probably. I think uh, those are then shipped down here. La 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 la. 
brought into the system here and um, and we can make we can eventually make these into in, into the science so the idea is catalogs all come in here and they get split off some of them come up here as you can see here to be fed into these which into the into the um, what are these called research servers up here some of them go in here to be made into insights. The insights come along here and are split somewhere. They're split here. There we go. So some of the insights go around here, again, to go into the research servers. Some go down here to be made into significant data. And those are the ones we've run out of. Uh, the significant data, of course, now will also now is also split off. So it goes down to astroscience, but also it goes up, which means it can be brought up to uh, be to be brought over here into the energy science supply or it can be passed out further upwards to go off to what's going to be material and biological sciences eventually when I build them up here. So this system is nice and expandable. It's it's going well so far. Now, okay, we've I, I, I've done two of the tier one researches. That's hardly um, hardly proof at this point. But so far, it's going it's going much as I expected it to. We're going to bring in all of the catalogs here. We're going to do all of the science in this area. Um, this seems to be basically okay. We just need to we just need to get more of the inputs coming along here to get this to work much more much more nicely, much more smoothly, much more efficiently and effectively. And I have to say, I'm looking forward to getting the more advanced, all, all of the more advanced recipes up and running and getting everything just, and getting us to the stage where we can actually do all of the sciences. Um, we can't, I can't really tell at the moment whether we're producing science fast enough to keep this, this uh, research lab happy. Um, because, as, as you can see at the moment, everything is ground to a halt due to the lack of energy science. But things are moving in the right direction. At the very least, we've been able to do quite a few of the um, of the sciences that require astro or energy. So here you can see we've now got pylons, for example. These are the long-range space pylons, not the pylon substations. We haven't got up to those yet. But these are the ones that are great for passing um, electricity across long distances in space. Because I think, if I'm, if I'm correct, I don't think you don't, you don't need scaffolding to put them down on. And they have a really, really long connection range. You can put them blooming miles apart, and it, 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 it works quite nicely. Uh, we've got the, this is the um, the astro particle simulation, which is the thing that allows us to do the uh, the better significant data recipe. Uh, we've got, we've got, we've sped up the uh, the robots. We've, oh, we've got, we've got ah, this this is something I'm going to talk about tomorrow. But we've got the um, the recipe now that allows us to make raw uh, rare metals. Allows us to make memory card substrates from the rare metal recipe, which is a bit cheaper. And the same, with, oh, making electronic components with lithium, nice. And so yeah, you can see there's, we, we've managed to research a few things like the yeah, the Tesla gun as well, and so we can now make ammunition for that and efficiency modules and so. On. And there'll be some with the astro science being done in here as well, like thermal radiating efficiency that allows us to make our uh, radiators a bit more efficient. So actually, I need to go in and reprogram all of the radiators to tell them be tell them to be a bit more efficient, and then to put in like four times as much because it's a slower recipe as well. <laughs> so that's another thing on the old to-do list. We did run into a bit of a problem though. Um, we've run out. We have straight up run out of load. Basically, run out of low density structures, as you can see here. And this is a big problem because almost everything in space is made largely of low density structures. Uh, so we've we've run out. Of, we've run out of belts. Well, actually, no. We're starting. We're starting to build up a, up a pile of them. But as you can see, there's 46 in the 112. There's there's like a few hundred available rather than the thousands that we get through. So that that's a problem. And all of the buildings up here, all of these require massive quantities of uh, low density structures to build. And so Mike put in the added in uh, a factory at the top here to make the uh, mechanical facilities. He's not got um, concrete in here yet, but he will eventually, I'm sure. Um, and that requires so that yeah, again requires requires lots of the low density structures. Just everything requires those. So there's a bit of a problem there at the moment. We've also got some other supply issues down on Norvis, but I'll talk about those tomorrow because today's episode is just going to be about um, about the space station. Otherwise, it's going to get very very long. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to touch on the, uh, the the reason why we have no low density structures tomorrow. And last but certainly not least, well, Mark has been building up the bioscience over here. So at the moment, this is oh, it's, I was going to say this is just a series of, of um, stations. It's not. He's got he's actually got stuff stuff plumbed in a bit more now. So when I last looked so towards late in the last late in the last stream, he just had a row of, a big row of stations along here that were obviously going to have stuff being brought into them at some point, and then a um, and then a collection of machines over here. But no, he's actually he's got a little bit further on than that. So now he's got the um, he's, he's got he started bringing the stuff up to the, to the stations. So we've got the uh, the coolant coming in here. We've got uh, chemical gel being brought in we've got uh what, what are you oh, oh this is bio goop when we have excess of it so this is going to be going away going away and picking it up when it's produced in excess quantities by the recycling facility down here so when these bi when the bio sludge builds up to an amount where we need to get rid of it at the moment we've only got 12,000 but when we do need to get rid of it it can be dumped in up here so that's that's great i'm, I'm really glad there's a place to put it when we do when we need to uh, he's bringing in cosmic water fertilizer is coming up from norvis so you can see there's a um a delivery cannon chest here that's picking, catching it and dropping it in here and passing it over. Uh, same with coal, and presumably these are going to be for things he needs later. I don't know what those are going to be, but they will be. They are available for 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 later. These are then all going to be fed out. To, yeah, also we've got all. Then we're doing the biological sciences over here. Bio, and biological science is always a um, 
always exciting, should we say. Always a, always a bit of a mission, <laughs> really. So, what have we got here? We've got standard coolant area down here. So, we're bringing in all of the... Bring in, a, bring in thermal fluid, as, as I sort of touched on. Uh, we filled up the tanks over here to 27,000. Sure, that's that's enough for now. It keeps keeps the system running. Pumping it through here. And now, so presumably, he's got decent decent quantities of the, the ones he needs. Well, he's got some of the ones he needs anyway. Then up here, what's go what is going on? So here we are trying to make. Uh, this is going to be the. Oh, this is the nutrient gel. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's coal fertilizer and all of the goops basically. Um, so ooh, how's this? How, how is how is this going? Well, um, I, see, oh, I see. I see. Bio sludge being attempted to be fed in here. He's got the. Um, He's got the chemical gel and the cosmic water. Oh, that's, sorry, the other way around. Chemical gel and cosmic water. We saw the we saw the stations for those over here. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if he's actually got enough in here yet. Okay, no, he has. Um, there just must be something over here that hasn't been turned on then, because, that, because these pipes are empty. Uh, well, there is an additional pipe coming across here. So there's. Ah, okay. There has been a plumbing mistake here. We, we are trying. We are, he's attempting to currently attempting to put um, uh, cosmic water into the bio sludge input. Um, some some fixes may be required along here, and also these these underground pipes aren't long enough, so that's going to need sorting out as well. Uh, so some some fixes are going to be needed in there. But then eventually, once he's got a supply of bio sludge, you can start making the the um, what's this called again? The nutrient gel. That's nice. Over here, what's going on? we have melting methane ice, which isn't, isn't exist. It doesn't exist yet. Okay, I'm. Oh, oh! So this requires oh, this requires methane gas as well. Crikey, that's a lot of different inputs. Okay, so yeah, he's going so he's going to have a supply of methane ice coming in here from somewhere. I know he can be he could potentially be shipping that in from um, Big Rid because he's got a, I know he's got a supply of methane gas over there, and with Cryonite you can freeze that down into methane ice. So maybe that's his plan. Um, he hasn't said, but I'm imagining that's probably going to be what he's going to do at least until he runs out of um, methane on Big Rid. So that'll get this system up and running at least to an extent. Then up here we can start making the uh, biomass. Uh, sorry, no, we can turn. But no, this is turning biomass into bio sludge. So you'll be making biomass somewhere and then sludging it up and, and pa passing it down on pipes into this stage to make the nutrient gel. Then up here we are. Oh, this this is all um, uh, the, the bio the, the goop recycling. So he's, he's put in his own own facility for dealing with the uh, contaminated cosmic water and contaminated bio sludge. And to be honest, that makes a lot of sense because we don't have a pipe system running to take it down here. So the only way to get the the contaminated fluids down here is by barrel. Now you are allowed to do that. The system will deal with it if you want to, but. Putting all of that into barrels, just get that, that's just a horrible idea. So I'm, 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 I'm all in favour of him doing this recycling in, on on site because it, it's all stuff that he needs. He's going to need the cosmic water back. He's going to need the bio sludge back. So yeah, this this makes sense doing this here. I, I'm <laughs> fully on board with that. Not it really matters. He's uh, we're all uh, we're, we we all have our own ideas and we don't we don't have to fully agree on absolutely everything. So then up here he's turning the nutrient gel into um, into these uh, nutrient vats, which can then presumably be turned into. Presumably those are going to be passed up here to be turned into some of these up later on stages of bioscience because yeah bioscience it's a big old endeavor so I'm not so it's going to take him a while to get all of this up and running I suspect but then we've got the um, the the Christmas tree things that make that will, will make him some genetic data and some, a different type of goop pot then up here this is where he's going to be making the actual biomatter so you put in a bio a bioculture for those things and I think oh yes bioculture I think is made from genetics data so you need that to go into there to make that but then you also need this to make the uh, the science catalogs so he's going to need lots and lots of these Christmas trees uh, so this can then be fed up into here to make the uh, bioculture when the nutrient gel to make the biomass and some gunked up um, and, and, and the gunked up bio sludge and cosmic water which can then be fed back down here for cleaning up and then recycling and the whole thing is a net positive so once you've got the system running once you're making some bio biomass um, you can you can you can turn the biomass into bio sludge and you can turn the bio sludge into nutrient gel somehow uh, here no Oh, I don't know. Here, yes. So you, yes. So you turn the biomass into bio sludge. You turn the bio sludge into nutrient gel, and you turn the nutrient gel into uh, into biomass. And that is a net positive because it's a biological thing. Everything it grows in a sort of a biological way, and so you can run that round and round and round and round and round, and eventually you'll get more and more and more of the, all all the things you need. And then once you've got a decent supply of all of that, you can then tap it off and then start making all of the science packs out of it as well. And that the whole system will then just sort of flow off this. But you need to bootstrap it a bit first. For, for which you need to bring in some, I don't know, fish or wood or um, some sort of biomass anyway in order to get it going. 
Um, it's probably been made a bit more complicated than this due to the uh, the joys of of Crastorio, but in back in um, back in the days of uh, of just playing 0.5, that was essentially how you got the thing bootstrapped and up and working. Now it's probably yeah we we've been talking. I talked earlier a little bit about how different um, different types of N uh, science have different difficulty levels. I think it's generally thought that um, biological is probably the hardest because of the sheer amount of pipe work and plumbing and byproducts and back and forthing and and bootstrapping and all of that. Sort of stuff that has to go into it. Um, material is probably one of the easiest as long as you've got a good way of dealing with the uh, with all of the scrap it produces. So yeah, Mike has been um, given the after being given the hardest of the um, of the materials to make. He's probably he's now hopefully got the one of the easiest of the uh, of the sciences to do. Uh, Astro is probably a close second on easiest. Um, it's it's also it's fairly similar. Um, I think you've got a bit more sort of byproducts and passing through for the later ones as far as I remember and the sheer throughput required of these of these um, frames in order to get enough uh, exposed frames in order to get your uh, your data cards out here is a little bit ridiculous but um, I think I should be able, hopefully be able to cope with that um, well I should be, I better be able to cope with that but I think yes it's still probably the second easiest and that puts energy somewhere in the middle um, because you've got to make all of the uh, all of these clouds and things which has a lot of inputs a lot of a lot of stuff to play with around here it uses enormous quantities of power as well which is why all of these have got um, have got a pair of uh, tier one uh, efficiency modules in them which as you can see over there on the right brings them down knocks 80% of the amount of power 80% of the power usage off bringing it down to a mere 20 megawatts instead of the 100 megawatts that it would take otherwise. Uh, minus 80% is the limit. You can't take it down below using 20%. But I bet even despite that, that's not the window I wanted, I bet even despite that, it, the, uh, those things are still using the most power out of everything. Yeah, you can see, so even despite the fact that we've knocked them down to down by 80%, all the way to 20% of their normal power consumption, they are still using 143 megawatts between them, and that is more than anything else in the in the system. Uh, that's averaged out over, over time. Um, our average power production over time has been six, almost 600 megawatts. So these are, in fact, using basically a quarter of our power, a quarter of the power that the entire space station is using is going into is going into those, these particle accelerators, which is kind of obscene. Um, it does make me wonder if the one up here. No, this one hasn't been um, hasn't had uh, the hasn't had productivity hasn't had efficiency modules put into it. So it's quite possible that this one is actually using most of that power. Although at the moment it does seem to be turned off, so it's not quite as much of a problem as I thought it might be. Um, I'm not sure why actually. Why are you turn off? Oh, you're not going. To... Ah, okay. So ah, that'll be why if we look. Yeah, you can see you can see it's slowly filling up with plasma stream there. That'll be why if we look at this, if we look over the last ten minutes, we've got all these spikes here. So each of the one of these spikes is is this is this particular particle accelerator kicking in. So I've told Tristan that um, one of the things I think he should probably do is strip out all of the um, all of the energy science stuff from here on the bus because none of this is needed anymore. We're doing it bigger and better over here. But if he strips it all out, then he'll get all of all the bits and pieces of it that are sort of part finished, like all of all of these cards. He can then go along and feed into the system down there. Now, to be honest, I'm pretty sure any one of us could go in and do that. But um, he's already doing the energy science stuff, so I feel it makes it makes sense to volunteer him for that. Um, we can then think about whether we actually need thermofluid up here. Um, I think not not at that temperature. We don't need it chilled down to the to chill, super chilled or chilled. We just need we just need the uh, cool for these ones. So yeah, again, we can then probably pull out these probably pull out all of the thermo thermofluid infrastructure over here. Um, we would, will want to leave these in because these are making a, a different type of data card and we might as well leave most of the rest of this in as well. So yeah, if there's going to be some, this, this part can be removed which is nice because we may want this area to expand the bus later. Right, I have now been talking apparently for 45 minutes. The, the video might be slightly shorter because I do edit them down a little bit, but I have been talking for rather a long time now, and I've only touched on the on the space station. So I think it's probably about time I stop talking. Um, I hope I haven't missed anything anything important anyone's done. I think I've, I've gone through all of the, all the stuff in the lists and uh, and, and and talked about it at, at extreme length. So I think we're probably okay here. So come back tomorrow when I should be talking about all of the things that've been going on down on Norvis and some of the uh, the crises we have we seem to be having down there at the moment. Um, I'll also touch on the briefly on the uh, the other. Oh, outpost planets because there have been a few changes made out there but mostly they are just sort of idling well they're not, they're not idling now they're just but they are they're finished so they are they are producing all of the stuff we need uh, up here in the space station but they're not doing so much um, act, we're not doing actual manual labor on them particularly ourselves so i'll be able to cover those fairly quickly then on monday please come along then because we should be continuing with the stream uh we should be 
doing all of the stuff I've been talking about today, carrying on with it, the next steps of it, getting more sciences up and running. And then on Wednesday, I shall be streaming the classic XCOM game from back from back in 1994. Um, my so it's going well so far. We are having uh, we've had lots and lots of soldiers slaughtered, I know, but um, but we are we are killing more aliens than we are uh, than we are soldiers. So I feel that's a, a positive. And we are getting more and more better science. I feel that at some point in the future we'll be able to do something um, a bit more terminal about the alien menace. But uh, it probably won't be on Tuesday. But come along then anyway to see us come along and to see me making some more more progress there. There'll be a, uh, a GTA video on Thursday. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head what this one's going to be about. It'll be, it'll be another manhunt run. It'll be great fun. Uh, so, yeah, make sure, please come along and watch that. They, I'd like those videos to do a little better than they are at the moment, if they, if they possibly could. Um, and then, yes, all the other stuff on the channel. If all that stuff is going on on the channel, please check out the channel sponsor. That's tree4.be. Uh, use the code LawrencePlays to get 20% off a Factorio or Minecraft or various other game servers. Um, and I think that's everything I have to talk about. I've advertised all, all the other stuff going on on the channel and the sponsor. Please make sure you check it all out because there's lots, lots of fun stuff in there. And I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.